What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Now, tonight I've got good news and bad news for you. Get it? The most and least favorite lures of 2019? Yeah, I can sense nobody laughed at that. Anywho, tonight we're going to go over my most and least favorite lures from 2019, lures and rigs that I used that I had the most success with. Now, I'm also going to give you my reasoning behind why I made the choice that I did, why they were a favorite or why they weren't so much of a favorite, because I know when I get to that part, I'm going to have a whole bunch of people frowning as soon as I show up the lure and say, this. Especially on the not so favorite side, people are going to be saying, Debo, you're an idiot. You don't know how to fish that lure. Or Debo, last year I caught 17,000 fish on that lure. What are you doing? Debo, I caught my personal best on that lure. You're crazy. I know. I get it. Hear me out when I get to that part and listen to my rationale. Now, like most things in life, I like to start off with the good news. So let's start on a good note and talk about the chatterbait or the bladed jig. And you know, lures going ups and downs for me. 2018, I couldn't put down a swim jig. It was my favorite moving bait. Year before that, spinner baits. And spinner baits have been a confidence bait for a long time. But man, last year, I did not want to put down a chatter bait, a bladed jig, you know, different variations of this. Seems like every time I threw them, I had luck catching at least one or two. And some days I was catching 20, 30 fish on that lure alone. In fact, it was one night after work. I had 20, I think it was almost 30 fish that one night. You might think that's not impressive. I do that all the time, but that was in just a little over an hour and a half after work. Absolute fire. You know, it was just one of those times where you catch it right. Yeah, the chatterbait. Chatterbait was definitely on my list. Now, there it is. The chatterbait custom. A lot of people ask me about this. Now, this is exclusive to Tackle Warehouse. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with them, so I like those a lot. Um, you can only get them there. They've got kind of a little bit shorter shank. Good components on them. I think they are a nice little upgrade over the standard chatterbait. Now, also I had good success with that bait right there. A little bit more expensive, but that's the Strike King Thunder Cricket. Um, biggest thing I noticed about this is it was consistent. Same as the chatterbait. I only had a couple of those. Got them on the 60% off sale at Gander Outdoors. I lost one after a couple trips and I've honestly been scared to throw this one. We just talked about that, being scared to throw lures. It's silly, why buy them then? But anyway, the Strike King Thunder Cricket like that. And also I had good luck on the Terminator Shuddering Bait. Now, as I kind of said before, this isn't going to um, replace a Chatter Bait or the, the Thunder Cricket, anything like that. It does have a little bit different hunting action on it. Uh, but the days I threw it, I honestly think I probably would have had just as much success with a Chatter Bait in the same conditions, but you never know. Uh, maybe that's something I'll need to do this year is try putting a couple of these head to head. I've done some of those in the past. In fact, it was one with the old chatter bait, me and Randizzle. And on that one, I think it was completely color. Color played the biggest difference in that one. But before we get off the chatter bait subject, my favorite trailers. Last year I used the Zacco for the first time, four inch, kind of a segmented swim bait. I have one actually right here. That's what you see right there, tied on the Thunder Cricket. Segmented, I like that. Durability, kind of like the regular Yamamoto, not the greatest, but it does have a little bit different action. I really liked it on the chatter bait. Like you saw on the shuddering bait there, that is the Rage Menace. Always have a few different colors of those stocked up. Black and blue, green pumpkin, white. Great as a chatterbait trailer, great as a swim jig trailer. That's what I originally really liked them for, but um, they work well on that. You can throw them as a Texas rig around a bunch of wood. They don't have a, a bunch of appendages to get stuck. So if you've not tried those, give those a try. I'm a big fan. And finally, my Segway lure is the Reaction Innovations, either Skinny Dipper or the Little Brother the Little Dipper, both of those by Reaction Innovations, a paddle tail swim bait, work amazing. That's what you saw this one here. That's that sungill color. Looks like a bluegill. Dip the tail there in a little bit of chartreuse. Goes great on the back of a, a chatter bait, a swim jig. You can fish them alone. And that's our segue, my favorite swim baits. What are we talking about? Well, fishing one of these on an underswim. Underswim? Underspin, whether it's a belly weighted underspin, um, you know, an open hook, jig headed type underspin. These are great. Love them. Can't say enough good things about those. The skinny dippers, I've got a bunch of different colors in them uh, because they work. They produce. I like them a lot. How can we talk about swim baits without talking about one of my absolute favorites, Beast Coast, the Miyagi. You've seen it on my channel. Probably not a surprise. I've talked about them on a bunch, but that color there, that secret AU or IU, I don't know what the correct pronunciation is. I was not an English major. That white color there is really good. I never got to try out those rainbow trout. I need to try those, but Man, the Miyagi is killer, 4.75 inches. I know some people say it seems kind of big, but compare that profile right there to a chatterbait. People say, oh, the man, that Miyagi is too big of a swim bait. Look at that. Compared to the chatterbait, it's basically the same size, 4.75 inches. It's not big at all. Perfect size. I've caught dinks on it. I've caught big fish on it. Actually, my personal best on this uh, in the bluegill color. They work great. And if you're looking for a hook, I would go with the Owner Beast, 6-op. One fourth ounce is what I throw because I fish a lot from the bank. 
fishing out deeper, you could go heavier. But that Owner Beast is by far my favorite hook on this. The Beast Coast Miyagi, big fan. Need to whet my whistle. Moving right along to the spinner baits. Yeah, the Strike King spinner baits specifically are something that I've thrown uh, for a long time. Like them a lot. These styles, this uh, Premier Plus, and I know there's another, forget what this one is, KVD something or other. Their skirt's a little bit longer. This one already comes with some painted blades, and they come with a longer skirt with that trailer on there. I've had a lot of luck with those. I like them. Couple days where the spinner bait was absolutely fire for me. I didn't have a great spinner bait spring. It was more the fall where that really popped off, which is surprising, but one of my all time favorite confidence baits. That's another lure. Lure video I'm going to be talking about soon. And one that surprised me is the little dollar spinner bait from Walmart. I tell you what, I caught a ton of pike on this and for being not a real heavy wired spinner bait, did great. Pike loved it. Skirt on it sucked. Skirt fell off after a while, but I got some of these replacement skirts. Um, these are Terminator, I believe Terminator replacement skirts. For a couple bucks you can get some of those and it completely transforms that little dollar spinner bait. Now grab some skirts. Moving along, let's talk about some jigs. Now I have to give Rand Dizzle 100% credit for these. He completely got me turned on to these War Eagle Heavy Finesse Jigs. 3 8 is what I throw most of the time. Half ounce works as well. It's kind of up to you. Remember, the lighter you go, especially around a bunch of rocks, the less likely you are to get hung up. So even dropping down to you know a quarter ounce if you can find them. You can see everything's already trimmed on it. I don't trim the skirt or mess with any of that. I put a smaller, low profile soft plastic on there. That is a Berkeley Pit Boss, the little three inch version. I just cut off the two outside legs there, so it's just got the two little flappy deals on it. Giving credit where it's due, my other favorite trailer, again, thank you, Rand Dizzle, is the Reaction Innovations three and a half inch Sweet Beaver. I didn't know they made a smaller version. I thought they only made the 4.5 inch, 4.2 inch, 4.2. That's the two of those compared to each other there. You can see the size difference. These I would bite off and have just a little back of it, but these, I don't bite anything off. Maybe just a little bit of the tip, thread it on there. Those are killer. The Sweet Beavers, big fan of those from Reaction Innovations. Now, one thing I do need to address, we're not to the things that I didn't like as much, but this is the Booyah, I think they call it the Finance Jig. Overall, looks extremely similar to that War Eagle Heavy Finesse Jig, right? They look very similar. However, every single one of these, and I've bought different ones over the years, three or four different packs of them when I found them on sale, they always have a rusted hook. I don't know if it's going to be able to catch that, but that hook in every single pack of these Booyah Finance jigs that I have bought, they've had rusted hooks on them. They come in a two pack. I don't know what the deal is. Otherwise, the jigs are great. They fish great, uh, good wire on them and everything, but rusty hooks are no bueno. Moving right along, probably my second favorite way to fish next to a frog is to flip and pitch heavy cover. Uh, wood especially in doing that, I have to give a shout out to the Texas rig. Probably my all time most catching fish looking lure. That's that trench hog, I think it's called. Um, I had a lot of luck with that. I know the durability is not the greatest. Price is pretty high. Um, so for some of you, it might be on that not so favorite list or maybe you don't want to use them at all, whatever. I had a bunch of people ask me, so I tried some, got them, you know, 60 some, 7% off at the gander sale, so I tried them out. Otherwise, I mean, you can go big worm in the summer on a Texas rig, you know, a little quarter ounce, three eighths ounce weight on there. Classic, you can catch so many fish on a big worm. Um, Pit Boss, love them. I've talked about them enough on my show. I don't think I need to say much more. And as I was just saying, that Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver, that bigger 4.2 inch. I mean, there's so many things. I couldn't even go through all the different things I like to throw on a Texas rig. Next, let's go finesse a little bit and talk about the Ned Rig. Now that's no secret, the Ned Rig is a huge fish catcher. I still scrunch my own face when I hear people say, the Ned Rig's stupid, I don't ever throw it, it's cheating. It's it's boring. I'd rather watch paint dry than throw that. I don't get it. I must be a crappy fisherman because I have no problem switching over and trying a Ned Rig when the bite is slow. Now, that's a new soft plastic I want to try on there. It's that little Rage Ned Bug. Looks cool. But the thing I want to talk about for the Ned Rigs is that. That weedless EWG Ned Rig head. That was the big game changer for me this year. Now, specifically talking about these, these are the lifted jigs. Now, these are where I seen first on Instagram, but I also picked up some of these Flatlands Tackle from Tackle Warehouse. Uh, both of them absolutely great. Hooks are just a little bit different on each one, but man, a Ned Rig with an EWG weedless deal like that, you don't have to modify your Ned Rig. You don't have to do a bunch of weird stuff. Gets hung up a bajillion times less. I don't know the exact number, at least 14.75%. Uh, more hookups and more catches on this. You get hung up a whole lot less with a weedless rig like that. I am such a big fan. Give them a try if you haven't. There's a number of companies that make them out there, but some EWG weedless Ned rig heads. And 
I heard uh, Basket gave me a shout out on his latest video. Hank, thank you very much, brother. I appreciate you. But he picked up some of these, so I'll be excited to see what he thinks of the Weedless Ned Rig. Let's talk about a couple cranks quick. How about the Rapala DT series? And these are a balsa wood. This is a DT6. You can see the bill there's a little bit bigger versus the DT4, a little bit squattier, a little rounder. That's the two there compared side by side. The DT series, that balsa is nice because it's highly buoyant. So when you hit stuff on the bottom, it wants to come up a little bit more. Also when it caroms off stuff, kind of has a little bit different action when it flows through. But uh, those balsa hard baits like that, great. I mean, great little crank baits. I had a lot of success with those this year. Um, and specifically another color, this color exactly. Now I've thrown the Lucky Craft crankbaits a long time. These square bills specifically had a lot of good luck with them. They are a little bit more expensive. So look for sales and uh, you can stock up. But this color specifically, this is the Texas white bass. This is the one I caught, I don't know, 40 some fish that day. Granted, a lot of them were pound, pound and a half dinks. But I mean, look at that thing. That was one day of using this. I mean, it is absolutely thrashed. Paint all off it, hook rash. Some little dinky largemouth bass bite marks. Great color, and I think it was all because of the match of the hatch. That place specifically has some yellow and you know those hybrid type bass in it. And that's what that's mimicking. Absolutely destroyed it that day. And this is also no rattles in this, and I threw it in kind of stained water, so I was surprised. But Lucky Craft Square Bill, the Rapala DT series balsa wood crankbaits, both are killer. Okay, quick mention to the popping perch. Yes, the popping perch. I thought it looked silly. Honestly, kind of dumb with the big tail things there. I wanted to cut those off. People said, no, fish them as is. That's the way I fish them when I catch large fish. So I did it and I caught good fish on them. They got perch colors with yellow and chartreuse, white and black, green dots. You can go straight black. They got a bunch of different colors in them. I had a really, really good year with the popping perch. It was honestly my favorite frog or frog type lure that I threw this year. And I was surprised. It was one that I never bought. I thought it looked kind of silly, but I tell you what, you can pop it slow. You can walk it, pop it fast. I had a lot of luck with them. If you've not tried them yet, I would suggest trying the Popping Perch. I liked it. Closing out my favorite list is gonna be the Berkeley Choppa. Now I had a video a while back where I compared this to, of course, the almighty Larry Dahlberg plopper plopper. There was some things that I was kind of concerned on with this. One was the hooks. Don't be concerned with the hooks. I caught lots of fish, never had any hook bending issues. Now I fished it on a little bit softer rod most of the time. Um, but it worked well. Some of the hardware up top, that little deal, I was kind of worried about it. I was also kind of worried about the tail. Nose didn't have any problems, but the tail? Well, it just so happens that this is the exact one that I caught my largest fish on this year. One just a little over six pounds, but somewhere along the way, looky there. Not that hook in my finger. Looky there. Can you see what happened there? The tail on this cracked and almost broke all the way through and off on that one. You can see bunch of hook rash on it. This is the one I threw the most, uh, kind of a silver with a black back. Great little shad imitation, but one of my big concerns was that the, the, the tail on this is a hard plastic, unlike the Whopper Plopper where that tail is a rubber, soft rubber, you can move it. I don't know, I probably slapped it against a, a rock when I casted it on one. I don't know what happened, that was a concern. It did crack, so that's just something to kind of be wary of. Um, I did find a bunch of these on sale at my local Shields for $6.99, so Look for deals on these. They are a lot less expensive than the Whopper Plopper, and they do have a very good loud plopping sound with that big tail. So, the Berkeley Chapo. All right, let's talk about what's in this little box here. Now, I want to make it straightforward that these were things that I personally didn't have success with. I am not in any way trying to badmouth these companies. They're good, reputable companies. They could have good things that I like. It was just a few things with these specific lures and baits that. I just didn't have success with. Now, granted, some of it I may have needed to put more time in with it, needed to fish at different places, maybe from a boat. Um, there's some things I could have changed and maybe had more success, but I figured, you know what? I think I need to share it the way that I used them, the things that I noticed, and share it with you. So maybe you have some of the same, uh, same feelings about some of these. Maybe you feel completely different. That's fine. That's what's awesome about fishing is there's not a right way to do it. So that's why I like hearing from you all I am a little bit behind on comments right now, but I promise I'm gonna be getting caught up and back to you in a timely fashion. So, the first thing, I know I've got a lot of people frowning right now saying, really Debo, that thing's awesome. I've seen all the awesome pictures of it. People catch huge fish. Well, the thing with this is, the little Lunker Hunt Spider, you've seen it all over. The thing does look awesome. You kind of you know move it across the water quick. It does look like a spider, but the problem that I had with it is it's small. Well, for example, this is another one that we're going to talk about. This is the Terminator walking frog, something like that. 
Look at the size difference right there. Look at the hook difference right there. I found this lure hard to fit in because it doesn't walk like a frog. It's light, so it doesn't get through the heavier vegetation. Uh, and it's got small hooks on it, so I can't throw it on my normal frog rod, you know, heavy, 65-pound braid. Um, I was struggling trying to do that with such a little tiny lure that likes to catch the wind. I also couldn't work it through the thick stuff, so maybe some real sparse vegetation. I don't know. I had a hard time fitting this into my arsenal of topwater stuff. And you know I love throwing topwater frogs, so I was excited to try it, but it's definitely a lot smaller. I mean, you can see there, compared to my thumb, it's way smaller than I thought it would be. So, I don't know. Let me know. Next, let's just talk about that frog real quick. I love frogs. My favorite way to catch bass is on the frog. This is that Terminator. I think they call it the Terminator Walking Frog. Beautiful profile, good big size. The body's nice and soft on it. The problem was I bought two of these and Randizzle bought one, my buddy Randy, and every single one the hooks were dull. Now maybe that was just a thing with some of the hooks that they got in. Let me know if you've had a different experience. Um, I had to sharpen both of mine up with my hook sharpener, but again, dull hooks are no bueno. Last one in the box is the Lucky Craft Sammy Bug. Now this is kind of like a, a jointed wake bait, buzzing, plopping tail, spy bait looking thing mixed with an old school jitterbug. Now the thing I noticed was it wasn't, it wouldn't walk like right off the bat. Sometimes I would kind of have to pop it. Um, now admittedly, I was always fishing this with a steel leader. So maybe that made all the difference. Uh, I didn't try it without. The problem for me was everywhere that I was fishing this, there was toothy critters. And I didn't want to have this popped off by one of those beasts. So this something maybe I'll try again this year because it looks cool. And once it gets going, it does have a cool little walking plop movement to it, but most of the spots I was fishing it in, I just I couldn't get anything to bite it, which is surprising with the pike. But I don't know. Maybe we'll work it more. Let me know if you tried it. Looks cool. Just didn't catch anything on it. But okay, switching gears. Let's talk about a bottom-dwelling lure, this Tokyo rig. I know. I've got people going, Debo, the Tokyo rig, bro. Well, let me tell you my deal with this. It was one of those lures that I couldn't really get to fit in in specific spots. Now, I know some people say they're throwing it around grass. That makes sense, right? But grass and vegetation I kept getting stuff on here and I've seen people say you can put two of these back to backs so there's like a point here doing a deal but I'm like why wouldn't I just throw a Texas rig it, it does the same deal people say well because when you want to keep that Texas rig up off the bottom you're dragging it through stuff you do that and it's like a drop shot right I kept getting this stuck in rocks um, I don't know you know on softer bottoms I was bringing up goop maybe I needed to go with a different weight I don't know. I just didn't have a ton of luck with it. Again, it's something I'm going to try more, but as of 2019, I didn't have a ton of luck on the old Tokyo rig. Now, I must say that I did catch a large snapping turtle on it, a very large snapping turtle on this. The swivel, the split rings, everything held up amazingly. So as far as the hardware on it, I'm not scared of the hardware on here at all. Good thick wire hooks, everything worked well, and I like the concept of it. Now, I know there's guys that have caught really good fish on it. I've seen the pictures, you know, I've seen the, the deals of people working it and tell you how to fish it, but I don't know. I just kind of struggled with it. It was kind of one of those in-betweens that I guess I just need to work more, but let me know your thoughts on the old Tokyo rig. Next up, the Booyah Melee Jig, and I was excited about this one. Looks cool. Heard from some people it's supposed to do better around wood than the chatterbait, and I've lost I don't know how many chatterbaits in wood, but the Booyah Melee Jig, this one was iffy. This one worked half the time. Colors on it are beautiful. It's got that Tinsley octopusy looking stuff off of it that flares out. Colors are beautiful. Skirts look nice. I liked how the, the blade there was colored. But man, if you get anything up in there, it doesn't work and it wants to roll. Now, I bought four of these. The other two that I tried without anything in there, no matter what type of trailer I had on here, they turned to the side. I couldn't get them to run right. So one out of four, I was, uh, I was a little discouraged. Now again, nothing against Booyah. I mean, the, the pad crasher they make is one of my top three favorite frogs. It makes some other stuff that I like, but this Melee, I don't know. Let me know if, if you tried stuff on here. I tried these without a trailer, with different trailers, a fluke, swim bait. I don't know what it was. The only one I could kind of get to run half the time was this one with a little Rage Menace on the back of it. I talked about that earlier. They work on about everything. I don't know. I was a little disappointed. Comment below and let me know if you had any issues with yours. Second to last, I assume a lot of people are going to frown and call me names when they see this one, but uh, yeah, the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. Now again, this is one of those where you got to hear me out. One of the things they say about these, it's a, a weedless swim bait, right? Well, I can just barely, barely touch that and my finger's already getting stuck in there. So 
I feel like the weedless thing should not be a big selling point on it. Now, maybe in some light grass and stuff, great. Now, speaking of light grass, if you're throwing these from the boat, I could see how they would work, right? And people say, well, you fish them like a jig on the bottom. Okay. As a bank angler, I tried fishing with these, and I started out with four. I haven't caught anything on them yet, and I'm down to two. The problem was I was getting snagged, and at like eight bucks a piece, I think they are, I would rather just grab some of those finesse war eagle jigs and throw those around rocks. Now, some people might say, well, you don't fish them around rocks. You only fish them around grass. Okay, I get it. Sometimes that's a little hard to do from the bank. So someone who is primary a bank angler, you know, maybe these aren't the best deal. And some people said, well, you don't fish them like a jig on the bottom. You fish them like a swim bait, right? They got a paddle tail. Swim around like that. Well, if that's the case, why wouldn't I go with like a Kitek or one of those little or skinny dippers from Reaction Innovations on a, a belly-weighted swim bait hook that is really, really weedless. I text pose that hook and I don't have to worry about getting hung up at all. So I feel like it was one of those things that's just kind of in between. Now, I know people have had a lot of success on these. I've heard people talk them up. Uh, one of my buddies loves these things, swears by them. I don't know. I've struggled with them. I didn't catch enough on them. Um, after the first day, I lost uh, two days. I lost two of them. After that, I kind of put them away and didn't really fish them a lot since then. So comment below. Let me know what you think of the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. They look beautiful. Kind of a cool hybrid design. I could see how they would fit in. But for me and my experience, I don't know. I feel like I'd rather just fish a swim bait or a jig. Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. Last but not least, Line. Now, Berkeley Solutions, I was really excited to try this. An affordable approach to 100% fluorocarbon. Uh, the only problem is it broke all the time on me. I had multiple lures that I cast it off. We cast it and the line snapped and it wasn't at the hook in the middle of the line somewhere. Um, so I don't know if, if the abrasion resistance is just bad on it. Both the spools I got were at the same time. <laughs> the heck are those? Both the spools of line I got were around the same time. So maybe it was just kind of a bad batch. Comment below and let me know if you have tried the Berkeley Solutions fluorocarbon. I have not used it since in fear of breaking off. I think I did break off one fish on it, um, cast it off a couple lures, and then getting hung up, I noticed that it break, broke, break it, broke pretty easy. So, get rambunctious. I didn't use it again. I just kind of lost confidence in it um, and didn't fish it. So let me know. Have you? Have you used it? All right, fishing friends, that's going to do it for tonight. I need you to all comment below and let me know what was one of your favorite lures and Maybe one of your not so favorite lures from 2019. Okay, tonight's subscribe fishing friend shout out goes to my man Finn the Fisherman. Lee, I thank you very much, brother. He shouted me out on Instagram not too long ago. Said, man, I got some inspiration from going back and watching some of Debo's videos. I went out and just started practicing. He was practicing some roll casts, some overhand casts, trying to polish up on some of the basics. And man, when you're having a slow day, do that. Work your pitching and flipping. Maybe you're not catching anything, but practice hitting little tiny spots, getting in little holes and openings. Practice casting under stuff. Don't have the day be a waste, say, oh, I didn't catch anything, go home and eat Doritos on the couch. Work on some stuff, work on your accuracy. Great time to do that. So Lee, thank you very much for watching and supporting and thank you all out there who watch and support. Again, without you, my channel be nothing. But that's it, you can't see it, but it's late. I gotta get to bed, so thank you all for watching and until next time.